She's a big one. I love to make stuff out of wood, but I really wouldn't call myself a woodworker. I'm kind of a wood putter togetherer. I am not a real woodworker. I just play one on TV. I've been wanting to up my skills and start using hardwood more. I recently received the newest 13 inch thickness planer from Rigid Power Tools, but in my current shop situation, I had nowhere to put it. I did some brainstorming and I came up with a design for a double ended flip top workbench. That way I could mount not only my planer, but three other large workbench top tools. Keep watching to see how it came together. And thank you to Rigid Power Tools for sponsoring this video. One of the great things about a shop build like this is it doesn't have to be completely perfect. This means I was allowed to cut all my components down to size before I started assembling. I also decided to save time, I would use my new DeWalt cordless framing nailer to put the pieces together, as opposed to screws or some other joinery method. I started the build by attaching side rails to four 28 and a half inch two by four legs. The design called for a couple of places that I wouldn't be able to access with a nail gun. So to join those pieces, I used a Craig Foreman to drill one and a half inch pocket holes in the ends of the boards. I found the center of the side rails and attached vertical support pieces using two and a half inch pocket hole screws. I really appreciate you guys watching. I'm trying to step up my game and give you the best content possible. If you want to help with that, make sure you like this video and hit that subscribe button. When both side assemblies were built, I connected them together using two by four stretchers. The outside stretchers intersect where the legs are attached, so I had to use pocket holes for those joints. The center of the frame is supported by double stack two by four cross pieces. Since I had access to the ends, I secured those in place with more three inch nails. Next, I reinforced the bottom some more with three more stretchers. At this point, I decided it was a good time to flip the frame over and add the casters. I needed to add them before the workbench got too heavy for me to flip over by myself. Plus, I was going to start adding things that were going to move and I figured it would make it more difficult to add the casters then. I found the center between the legs and the center cross pieces and marked that location on the upper side rails. I used a paddle bit to drill a 7 8 inch hole all the way through, being careful to keep the hole as horizontal as possible. I then started working on the flip top work surfaces. I started by finding the middle of the 2x2 two two center bars. I then drilled a 7 8 inch hole straight through. If I had a drill press, that would have been ideal for this situation, but drilling carefully with a handheld drill worked fine. I then attached the end pieces of the inner frame to the center bars. I didn't want to risk breaking these smaller components by firing a nail from a nail gun, so I decided to hold them together by pre-drilling and driving 3 inch wood screws. Next, I added the inner frame sides. I used a large speed square and a measuring tape to transfer the location of the hole in the center bar to the sides. I then carefully drilled more 7 8 inch holes through the side pieces. I then did a dry fit to make sure that the 7 8 inch dowel that would function as a pivot axle would fit inside the frame. When I was sure it could be inserted smoothly, I used a miter saw to cut the dowel to 30 inches in length. I then turned my attention to the 3 quarter inch plywood panels that would be attached to the inner frame of the worktops. I placed the plywood sheet on a piece of foam insulation and used my DeWalt brushless circular saw to cut the panels to size. I dropped the 26 inch by 28 inch plywood panels over the inner frame of the worktops, pre-drilled and secured them in place using one and one quarter inch wood screws. 
it was time to add the flip tops to the frames. I'll admit, this part was a little tricky. It definitely would have been easier if I had an extra set of hands. I had to get the flip tops roughly lined up with their location inside the frame. Then I could slide the dowel from one end of the frame through the flip tops and out the other end of the frame. It took a little persuasion with a hammer to make sure the dowel is driven all the way through. Once both flip tops were installed, I attached additional 2x4 aprons on the sides of the workbench side rails. The aprons not only reinforce the frame, but they prevent the wooden dowel from sliding out either end. I needed a way to lock the flip tops in place. I made sure there was an even one quarter inch gap around all three sides and made sure the top was level. I drove a four inch deck screw through the frame and into the flip top to hold it temporarily in place. Next, I drilled a one half inch hole through the outer frame into the inner frame of the flip top. I inserted a five inch carriage bolt to work as a locking pin. Then I removed the temporary deck screws. Then I drilled a hole and added another carriage bolt to the opposite corner of each flip top. With the tops locked in place, I started to load it with my tools. The generous worktop space was big enough to accommodate my larger workbench tools like my Craig Foreman. It was even strong enough to hold all 73 pounds of my rigid planer. I screwed the planer in place on top of the plywood, but then reinforced the connection by tightening 5 16 by 5 inch bolts through the thickness of the entire flip top. The last step was to build and install some DIY outfeed rollers on the opposite side of the planer. I gave all the tools a test flip and then rolled the bench into place. I was a little nervous the first time I flipped my shiny new planer over upside down, but it held on like a champ. That thing's not going anywhere. If you're looking to increase your variety of materials that you build with, the rigid 13 inch corded thickness planer is a great place to start. It's powerful and reliable and very reasonably priced. The three reversible blades make getting a smooth surface much easier than some of their competitors. It will accommodate boards up to 13 inches wide and six inches thick. That's one of the best capacities for a lunchbox style planer like this. Check out the link in the description box for more information about the specific rigid planer model that I use, including dimensions. Once the bench was set up, I set up the cutting thickness on my planer, which was really easy to do using the IndyCut depth gauge, which helps prevent me from taking too deep of cuts on each pass. I found a scrap of maple and then gave my workbench a new planer a test run. It worked so well and those outfeed rollers were a lifesaver. Don't worry, I'm working on the tutorial right now and I'll be releasing a video on how to build those next week. I'm so glad to have a dedicated place for all those big tools, including my planer, even if it makes a really terrible mess. I guess dust collection is next on my list. What would you mount to your flip top workbench? Here's a couple more videos that you guys might like to check out. Remember to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the Pneumatic Datic channel. Thanks for watching guys.